So I wanted to make a video on material models specifically. I get a lot of questions about can I make a model for somebody or can I get a material for wood or material for plywood or composites or whatever. And I just want to make something clear for everybody that material models are probably the hardest part of LS Dyna in all honesty. Outside of like debugging a really complicated model for stability purposes, material models are the most complicated thing. And sometimes even more in debugging. So this is because material models are not as simple as just saying I need a material for for wood or I need a material model for this rubber ball. You have to actually define it within LS Dyna and it's a multi-step process. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to know the general response characteristics of the material you're looking to model. So this can mean if you have a beam that you're trying to model as a metal, like a bridge or something like that, how do you expect it to respond? So here I have the response of steel. Um, you're going to have a linear response up into a certain point where it's going to start to trail off and you're going to have a yield point where it's going to change the behavior permanently. Um, <clears throat> so you need to know these things in order to pick a correct material model. And the reason is because is there's a ton of different material models. Uh, there's hundreds of them and uh, they all have different response characteristics inherently. So an elastic material is going to respond elastically. It's just going to go back up and come back down the exact same way. Um, Viscoelastic is going to respond slightly different. You also have hyperelastic models, which are going to increase in stiffness as they deform. Um, and then you have things that are more complicated, like different types of rubbers, like an Ogden rubber model or a, um, so where's Ogden? Ogden rubbers here. We have all these different parameters and you can't actually even input these. You have to fit a model to this. And you have things that model steel, like uh, piecewise linear plasticity here. So um, you need to determine what response you're looking for because all of these different material models have different parameters that you can input and some of them don't have parameters like I mentioned before. So once you find a set of material models that you think may fit your uh, type of material that you're trying to create, you then need to look through all of the different parameters here and you can click through them and just look at what it says. So Young's modulus, mass density, which is really basic, Poisson's ratio. So these are staples of most material models. And then you're going to have things that aren't staples that you can find as well. Like here you have yield stress. So this is what, what is used for um, metals a lot because there's a yield stress uh, coefficient. So this will lead me to my first point, which is some materials are way more difficult to define than others. So like I said, things like steel or metals or things that are really easily documented or not easily documented, but readily documented, easy to look up the parameters. There's a way easier to define than something like, um, like plywood, which is kind of a composite behavior or glass or anything that's going to have like fracture mechanics behind it. Things like that are way more difficult to define as a material property because you can't just input parameters to define it. You actually have to fit it in some cases, do multiple materials to get that response that you're looking for. So it, it can get really complicated really fast. So my advice is if you don't have to do a complex material, I know they sound really like cool, don't do it. Stick to something that's basic like steels or plastics that are well documented. Um, some materials even need to use input curves from physical testing in order to get specific uh, response for different rates. Um, this is if materials are really specific to uh, a certain case. Um, once you have a material that you, um, like a material model like I mentioned here, you need to find these parameters online. So you have to go online and you can just Google steel or aluminum and you're going to come up with all of these different material uh, properties. So you have your modulus of elasticity, which you would input here. You have um, your bulk modulus, Poisson's ratio. All these things are pretty easy to find and you have to make sure that all of your units are lining up. And there's different unit systems online you can look up like the SAE unit systems and you need to make sure that they're consistent across the board that your stress lines up with your uh, unit of length which lines up with your unit of mass etc. So um, 
the difficult thing if you're trying to model something that is not well known. So if you have like this rubber ball at home and you're like, this would be cool to make into a finite element model. Well, it sure would, but the issue is you cannot just say, hey Google, give me the properties of this rubber ball. Well, what type of rubber is it? How do you know it's that type? Can you prove it? And the thing is, is most of us can't prove it because we don't have material testing um, uh, devices that a lot of companies do and you can just you know, figure out what the response is and then match material to it. Um, you may be able to find some examples of basic material models online for like rubber or plastic. So if you just look up like mecha mechanical properties of plastic, you can find some basic, um, so yeah, you can find some basic overviews of you know, tensile strength and um, all these different things. And they're gonna vary from place to place that you look online. So you're gonna have to do a lot of searching and a lot of piecing together, but you can find something that's kind of a general um, plastic or a general rubber. And if you're not trying to actually like model something specific, and if you're trying to do something more general, this is a good thing that you can do. Um, but again, you have to actually fit this to a material model in Elastina, which is a whole nother story. Um, and I'll get to that. Uh, so like I said, things like metal and uh, well-known plastics and this type of thing, um, maybe the easiest metal, especially because they're simple models, you can even just make them elastic. Uh, and the other thing to take into account is even if something is steel, there's a bunch of different types of steel. So you have um, like stainless steel, you have carbon steel, um, within aluminum, you may have aluminum, you have aluminum alloys, um, different things. If you're really trying to be accurate, you're going to have to get deep in the weeds with this stuff and figure out what are the uh, material properties of this specific thing. And they're documented somewhere. I mean, you know, there's codes for all these different things that you can find, um, but you just need to make sure that you're covering your tracks. If you can't find the material properties or the material parameters online, what you have to do is a material characterization test. And this is what I was saying that we just can't do because we don't have equipment for it, but maybe you do. Maybe you're at a university and you have a MTS machine and you can do tensile testing and compression testing at a bunch of different rates that you can then get a good sense of the response characteristics through those rates. And then you need to fit that physical data. Uh, so you take the physical data from that MTS machine and that in those different tests, you then need to fit it to a specific uh, material model because um, all of these different things were built for some specific reason. So you're not going to get a rubber and try and fit it with a, uh, um, a piecewise linear plasticity model. Maybe you are, maybe it's a weird type of rubber. I don't know. You're not going to take steel and fit it to viscoelastic or fit it to um, an Ogden rubber. It just doesn't make any sense. So um, there's different programs that allow you to do this. But the issue is, again, that you have to pay for these programs, and a lot of times they're for commercial use only, and uh, it's just hard for anyone to get access to those, and beginners especially. If you end up getting a material model from this tensile testing and fitting it to one of these materials, you then need to take that material that you have, apply it to a simulation that replicates a uh, the physical testing that you did, so tensile testing with like coupons or compression testing, and you're then gonna get uh, like stress strain response data out of Ellis Dyna, and you're gonna wanna compare that to the physical testing. Because if those two things are not close together, then the material is obviously not replicating what it should be doing in real life. Um, and you wanna make sure that you set up your boundary conditions well to do this. Uh, but if they do line up, then that means, hey, you have a validated material model, this responds like this does, so you can use it. And that's, that's great, that's the optimal goal. Um, but lastly, not all finite element solvers or programs use these same materials across the board. So the programs here in LS Dyna are specifically for LS Dyna. There you go, wood. Um, the thing is, they were built specifically for LS Dyna. There may be an elastic model in ANSA or, um, uh, what am I trying to say, Abacus but it's not the exact same. Some, some materials that you know researchers develop, like Mooney Rivlin, they may be um, converted across programming languages, but they're still specific to that um, solver, so they may not have the exact same parameters. 
So just know that so you can't just go online and ask for any specific uh, or any general material model for any solver. It has to be specific to that thing. So if you're using LS Dyna, you need to find an LS Dyna material model that works for your application. This seems like a lot of complaining, but I just wanted to lay this out there for any beginners. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of how complex material models are. It's not as easy as like a like a plug and play. You can just click, make it some really complex rubber or a composite. It's not that easy. Um, you really have to do a lot of work to get something accurate. Um, if anyone has any questions about this or wants to uh, continue a discussion on what good material models are for different things, we can do that. You can comment in the comments below this video. You can also post on the forum. I'll link to that. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video and I hope this was helpful.